Welcome back to the Get Unstuck and On Target podcast. I'm Mike O'Neill with Bench Builders, and we help growing companies, especially manufacturers, improve their people, process, and planning systems so they can scale smarter and faster. Joining me today is Suzanne Taylor Keene. Suzanne is a life and mental performance coach. My friend, Chris Michelle, also known as Coach Chris, introduced me to Suzanne about six to eight weeks ago and she has so warmly welcomed me into her coaching tribe. In short, she's a coach's coach. Since 2009, Suzanne has supported practice owners, entrepreneurs, and coaches grow personally and professionally. She's a technology wizard and a master certified coach who has a unique coaching background and a genuine interest in seeing others succeed. Welcome, Suzanne. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. We are recording this early, early for me, maybe not early for you, early uh, in the morning. And Suzanne, you are so capable of speaking on a wide variety of topics. But one of the things that I felt that would be most interesting to our listeners um, is something that you have expertise in. And therefore, I'd like to entitle this episode, Here Comes the Judge, Your Master Saboteur. Love it. Tell me a little more about this. Would you kind of set up for our listeners? What is it that we're talking about? This mental muscle regarding um, what you need to exercise and how do you strengthen it? So can you walk us through that? Well, I love this because we all have that internal dialogue and that's, that's really what the judge is. They, it, it is that internal Uh, voice in your head that you hear on a recurring basis. And for most people, it's totally under the radar. It's almost subconscious that you hear those statements about yourself, about other people. And it, it typically is very finger pointy type of commentary. Um, Some of my clients say it's a running commentary of life, like a news report. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is that. This is that. And you're constantly making up stories or judgments about yourself and other people. So kind of put this in perspective. When I see the word or hear the word saboteur, I guess that's French. In what ways do we sabotage ourselves? Well, there's so many. in my early days in coaching, I was a health coach. Hmm. So health, uh, fitness, uh, food, I was a holistic nutritionist. And one of the first things I addressed in that coaching practice was emotional eating. So how you could want to be on a diet, you could want to be healthy, but something internally made you cheat or sabotage those healthy efforts, say you made them all week, and then you get to Friday or Saturday, and you you eat entirely too much, you you sabotage all of your weight loss efforts as a reward for doing well, you know, the five days prior. And that was really my first exposure into self-sabotage. And most of the work I did as a fitness and nutrition coach was really mindset work, encouraging positive thinking, positive goals, maybe some daily affirmations, but really about taking that judge and turning that internal commentary into not really being on a diet, but I'm taking care of myself. I'm doing what's best for my body. And also the outlook that one cookie didn't ruin your week. Mm. So a lot of times when we start to self-sabotage, we just say, whatever, I'm now I'm going all in on the junk food or I'm going all in on the alcohol or I'm going all in on something else. You know, maybe it's technology that you're addicted to. So I think really realizing that one little slip up doesn't 
ruin all of your progress. And that's, that's a shift in your mental thinking. Suzanne, you were kind enough to send me a, a probably a handout that you give your clients that begins to list some of these, uh, you refer to them as accomplished saboteurs. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several of, of those. Would you maybe pick some that you feel that you see all too often that might be um, helpful for our, our listeners to learn more about? Sure. Um, one of the things I love to do before I start working with a client is to know their innate character strengths mm -hmm. and those subconscious saboteurs. So beneath the judge, beneath your voice, there is typically a way that it presents itself depending on how you were raised, your childhood, your life experiences, and what you are currently doing. So my is the avoider. And the avoider um, basically says, you don't have time to do that right now. You'll do that later. Hmm. Or uh, that feels uncomfortable. Why don't we do that tomorrow? And then tomorrow never comes because yes. I'm just plainly avoiding whatever the task is at hand in favor of doing something that is more brain chemical rewarding, like scrolling social media. Hmm. Uh, so one of the other common saboteurs with a lot of entrepreneurs is the hyper achiever. Hmm. So the hyper achiever shows up because of the entrepreneurial mindset because entrepreneurs as a whole are resilient and full of grit. They're willing to take risk, but they also can lean a little bit towards the perfectionistic. It has to be perfect. And if I get the bronze medal, mm, it's not quite good enough. I could have gotten gold. And that that's probably the most common with an entrepreneur. Um, my favorite saboteur to tackle is the victim. Mm. The victim shows up for those people who are operating from a place of ego. And I deal with a lot of doctors, attorneys, and very high profile influencer type coaches who don't even want the public to know that they have a mindset coach. Mm. So getting past that ego of it's not me, it's you. And reminding them that anytime they point the finger and claim victimhood, you know, there's three fingers pointing back at them. Yes. So that's a fun one for me. You've mentioned three. I know there are more. Uh, mm -hmm. Last night over dinner, my wife and I just kind of went through this handout. Oh, I and, love it. Um, and I kind of put check marks next mm. to some. I don't mind sharing. Um, as you may know, I moved from a corporate HR role to being a business owner. And as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, the um, the higher the, the hyper achiever piece, it, it for me, big time. And I think you see that a lot in entrepreneurs. Yeah. You mentioned you work a lot with um, professionals, mm -hmm. doctors, lawyers, even coaches. Um, and the ego, you mentioned the ego. You need the ego to be successful in those roles, mm -hmm. but that ego can come back and, mm -hmm. and hurt their overall effectiveness. Is that what you're finding? Well, I believe that typically you need confidence to succeed. Mm. You need leadership skills to succeed. But thinking that you know it all, you are it all, you're always right. To me, that's what ego means. That there couldn't possibly be another perspective. That you're, you're leading with that type of push authority instead of the leadership authority of look what we could create do you want to come along with me 
the nature of your coaching practice, it sounds as if it's kind of evolved. It, you mentioned early on uh, it was more holistic medicine, and it's not mm -hmm. that you've abandoned that, but can you describe a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey as a coach? How has uh, it evolved? Yeah, it's really, it's amazing now to look back on it. It's, it's totally exactly what I would have imagined, hmm. but during, it didn't make any sense. Uh. And I know it didn't make sense to me. I know it didn't make sense to my friends, family, but now looking back, I'm like, oh, I see. And so originally I was a dental hygienist for 20 years. So my background was science, hmm. healthcare, noticed with a lot of my patients that nutrition was an issue. Mm. And I started diving into the connection between nutrition and illness. And that's what started uh, the journey of health coaching and really started it as a hobby. I worked at a gym teaching fitness classes for fun and my clients walked in the door. So yes. I had this instant following instant rapport with people and it was super easy to build a coaching practice when i started moving into the online space that's when i had started to study positive psychology and i wasn't sure what that meant for my health coaching practice so i added on life and wellness coach hmm. so then i could at least at the time, I was feeling like I was coaching the whole person. Yes. Um, not only your fitness journey, but if you're not sleeping, you don't have energy to work out. Yes. If you're not drinking enough water, you, you can't possibly have the stamina to run a 5K. So there's all these things that were intertwined for me in my mind. And then I've owned a business since early nineties. My first business generated over a million dollars the first year without any social media, without any marketing, without any advertising, just word of mouth. It's remarkable. It, it's amazing now, honestly, to look back at it and having that entrepreneurial spirit, starting numerous businesses, entrepreneurs were attracted to me. So then I'm working with mostly entrepreneurs on their health journey, on their wellness, on their mindset. I thought, well, there's a lot of business pieces here. There's a lot of business acumen or resources that I have that I've built up over the years that I want to share with other entrepreneurs. And so that's how it kind of evolved into mental performance coaching for entrepreneurs. I love kind of how this evolved. And I love the fact that you said that it really has kind of worked out the way you might would have originally envisioned mm -hmm. it. I want to continue on this path of entrepreneurs as someone who has been self-employed now for well over a decade. I can't tell you the number of friends who are in a corporate role who will pull me aside and over coffee or a beer, just kind of look me in the eye and just said, oh, I just long to own my own business. Mm -hmm. So many people have expressed interest in doing so. And there are a lot of very successful entrepreneurs out there, but for those who are listening, who might have in the back of their mind, I would love to own my own business. What have you found might be just absolutes that they need to understand before they take that plunge? Oh, number one, it's going to cost you more money than you think it is. Yes. Um, number two, you can start it with very minimal startup money and you don't need a website and a social media presence. You don't need to be an influencer. You don't need to have online courses. You don't need to have all the things that you, the shiny objects that you see successful people having. 
Mm -hmm. Just get your idea down on paper, talk to people about it, and start. Just start. And Mm -hmm. then form your corporation, you know, which is typically $75 in the state, depending on the state you live in. And don't worry about all the fancy, shiny things like the business cards, because they're going to change 20 times. Uh, The website's going to change, you know, 10 times before you get it right. So just breathe and just start. Mm, Great guidance. Suzanne, as you kind of reflect on what you've been able to do, can you share an example where either you or a client got stuck? And when that happened, what did it take to get unstuck? Well, I'll share what I just talked about is where I got stuck. Okay. I got stuck in the beginning thinking that I had to invest $10,000 in a website and I needed it to have a coach that was another ten or $20,000. And I, I needed to have another certification and another certification. And, you know, looking back, it's great. Now I had, you know, 15 certifications, but I didn't need all of those things to get started helping people. And so that's, that's number one. Number two, I think if I had to do it over again, I would work on myself and my internal trust in what I wanted to do instead of listening to other people tell me what I should be doing. Mm. And if you had listened to yourself Mm -hmm. and trusted yourself, how might you have done things differently? I'd be doing things the way I do them now. Mm. Um, Networking, speaking, meeting people, creating clients from those relationships, not expecting to post on social media and make money. That's what I thought. That's Mm. what I thought. Like I literally, and I've talked to so many people who feel the same way that they thought coming into the online space, I'm a coach, I'm going to post on social media. People are going to comment and they're going to go to my website and buy my stuff. Everything I've done that's been substantial has been created through relationships with people. Well, it's those relationships with people that brought us together probably Mm -hmm. about two months ago because you have multiple ways in which you can connect with folks. Yes. Um, Matter of fact, there's almost too many to kind of list. But when people hear the word coach, Mm -hmm. it's funny, their mental understanding of what Suzanne Taylor King does may be way off. Uh, I know that you do coach Mm one-on-one. I know you work with teams. You conduct workshops. The mastermind program you have, uh, very intriguing. Would you mind taking a little while just kind of walk us through one, what is a mastermind and the approach that your mastermind takes? What what really is making that work so well? Well, I actually have uh, three different mm. mastermind groups. So I, I don't advertise them all. And again, that's that's the, um, the beauty of personal connection. So if I meet somebody and they're interested in working with me, based on the conversations we've had, I know where they're at in business. And I wouldn't want to put them in a mastermind group that's full of network marketing entrepreneurs if they were in financial services okay i would want to put them in a group with other service professionals Um, and it also depends on income level there's different challenges at different levels of income in business so my mastermind groups they all function in a group environment where we meet weekly or monthly. My my coaches group, which is currently free, meets monthly. And it's just to have conversations. It's nothing formal. But 
the entrepreneur groups are typically weekly and it includes some learning, it includes some homework, and the biggest portion is the accountability factor. Do what you say. What did you say you were going to do last week? Did you do it? If not, why not? And how can the group help you? So I typically keep those groups between eight and 10 really engaged people. Mm. And I'll give you an example. My one group has 14 people and reason being six of those people are all on one network marketing team. I see. And I've noticed a couple people missing weeks at a time. Hmm. Now they're still paying, which I think is ridiculous. Like, why are you paying for something you're not doing? So that's a whole nother coaching opportunity for me. But as soon as I notice that, okay, Mary missed second week of the month, Mary and Sally missed the third week of the month. Mm -hmm. And then Mary was here and Sally wasn't, I start to get curious what's going on with my clients. And that's when that personal touch comes in. And because the group is small, I know their businesses. I know their personalities. I know their strengths. I know their saboteurs. So I can reach out to them, whether it's text or a quick phone call. And I believe that coaching is relationship driven. It's co-created. And if my clients didn't have my phone number, I don't feel comfortable saying they're my client. Hmm. I don't, do I have online courses that people I don't know sign up for and they take? Yes, but I don't market them anymore because I don't believe in that model of not knowing your clients. You know, Susan, I introduced that the topic of this podcast would be saboteurs. And yes, we've touched on that, but we've gone in some other different directions. As we kind of go back to the theme of your master saboteur, the judge, if you mm -hmm. would, is there anything you would like to add or kind of recap that so that our listeners have a kind of a clear understanding of that concept? Yeah, I would say imagine knowing and being aware that that voice in your head is not you. So those doubts, those insecurities, the blame, the victim, the, oh, things should be like that, or jealousy even, envy, mm -hmm. all of those things are going to come up as an entrepreneur. And I would love for people to feel as though that's not who you are. And it's only through personal growth and personal development that you can really separate what's being said in your head from who and I I think that is part of my mission to help more people feel like that well I know that that mission has been fulfilled in part by you just spending some time with me today um, I'm confident that there are folks who are listening and or watching this episode and say I want to learn more from Suzanne, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Honestly, just go to my website, SuzanneTaylorKing.com. On the very first page, there are three different ways to grab some resources from me to learn more. There's my newsletter, there's an incredible um, mental fitness checklist that, that's kind of the start of this self-awareness journey. And if someone's interested in taking the saboteur assessment, um, I typically reserve those assessments for my clients or potential clients. But if someone reaches out and connects with me on social media, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, um, I dabble on Instagram, not super fond of it, 
reach out to me and say, gosh, I really loved that conversation. And I want to know more about my saboteurs and I'll send them the resource that I sent you and the quiz to find out who's showing up in your head so you can learn more about yourself. I know you just kind of characterize who's showing up in your head in a negative light, but I want to sp spend that a little bit. You have showed up for this podcast and we've had a chance to see you be you. And mm -hmm. it just kind of, it just draws me even more closer to you. We have a new relationship, but it's a relationship that there's no question for those who are listening to Suzanne, uh, it's genuine. She oh, genuinely cares for people she comes in contact with. And though you didn't say this, another thing I've noticed that you're very good at is connecting others mm -hmm. and your willingness to be real and connect others. Uh, just make you someone who I'm enjoying to get, get to know, and I'm looking forward to get to know better. And I just want to say thank you for being part of this podcast. Well, thank you for one of the best compliments ever that feeds my soul to hear that that's how it feels to spend time with me. I, I love connecting other people who, who should know each other. So thank you for that. I appreciate you. You bet. I also want to thank our listeners for joining us today. We upload the latest episode on Apple, Google, and Spotify every Thursday. So if you've enjoyed this episode with Suzanne, please subscribe to learn from other great guests. Is your company growing quickly? Are you worried that you don't have the right people and processes in place to handle the increased workload? Or maybe you aren't sure you've got the right planning systems to assure success. If you answer yes to any of that, let's talk. Head to our website, bench-builders.com to schedule a quick call. We'll explore ways to help you solve those nagging problems so you can scale faster and smarter. So I want to thank you for joining us. And I hope you've picked up some tips from Suzanne that will help you get unstuck and on target. Until next time. <music>